right, so this is my 1972 Harley Davidson FX shovel head. It didn't look like this uh, when I got it. Um, there's still a whole bunch of things that I want to do to it. Uh, when I originally got it, it had uh, one of the pogo seats. Um, it had the original oil tank set up. And it just, you know, it wasn't my jam. Uh, picked it up a little bit over, I want to say half a year ago or more of like that. And since then, I've done a couple things to it. I went ahead and put a 21 inch front wheel. When I originally got it here, I'll post a, a picture right here, but it had a 16 front and back set up, the Harley Pogo seat and you know like kind of the, the older style handlebars on it and a big football of a headlight but uh, this is how she sits currently uh, got this headlight from my buddy dustin i uh, just using kind of like the stock headlight bracket which it's not supposed to be like that but you know made it work somehow um, this front end is actually a uh, a front end off of a early 60s maybe late 50s servo car which is the three-wheeled harley davidson's um thing is about this front end is it's on the, uh, this is actually a pivot to where when you loosen uh these or uh, this bolt right here you could change the location of the bolt and actually it would actually give it more rake um not completely in love with the front end but it's Seems to be worth some sort of money, so eventually I will sell it and change it out for something different. California blue plate, this bike has been in California its whole life. Did a tin style primary using Paco parts that I purchased from my buddy for a good deal. All this stuff was brand new. Um, took a little bit of a time to get it to work and a lot of cutting and fitting and all that but yeah it somewhat works now and I'm happy with it uh, three and a half down split tanks my buddy Anthony went ahead and gave me these bars um, I think they're uh, the silverback stainless steel 8 inch rise tapes but I love these bars uh, the engine is stock. There's definitely been some work done to it. Um, the only thing I've done is actually remove the Dyna S electronic ignition that was in here and switched it out for points uh, in order to make it a little bit easier to start. And currently still running the stock Bendix that came with it. If there's anything I absolutely want to change on this bike right now, it's that Bendix. Mainly due to the fact that it's running really rich. But other than that, you know, I'll just, as routine maintenance, I'll go ahead and pull the spark plugs and uh, clean them out every once in a while. Uh, these shock covers I found, these were uh, NOS shock covers. Um, the bike didn't come with it. They came just, you know, the spring was exposed and I actually dig the way that this looks. But yeah, this bike is going to remain like this for a good while, I feel. You know, uh, as of right now, like, as much as I love working on bikes, uh, I really need to just learn how to enjoy them. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is kind of the whole jam with this right now. But yeah, I got really lucky with this one. And it's, it's an older transmission that's in here, so not the original ones. And it's sealed tight. Like, this shit does not leak whatsoever. And the only leak that I have is coming from the engine. Uh, crankshaft main seal on the left side of the case. And that's mainly due to the fact that when I swapped over to this tin style and the belt drive, um, the main seal is actually backwards from what it's supposed to be. As you can see, I have a small leak and that's the only thing leaking on this bike. Uh, the seat, this is, uh, you know, a lot of friends kind of Threw parts at me and that's pretty much what I'm running. 
just a rider. So uh, this is a seat that my buddy Eric went ahead and lent me. It just held on by an old belt. So yeah, I mean, I'll get to it. I have a lot of plans for this one and I really dig it. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. First video, so I have more. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And that's that.